This is bullshit. When the Sony WH-1000XM5 was released, we gushed over it and gave it a rave review. But does the Soundcore Space Q45 poop all over Sony's party? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Poop. Kuridach, we're DHRME, doing headphone reviews more than ever. No sh**. We're going to start with the most shocking category, noise cancelling. I mean, before that, let's start with another shocker. The Soundcore Space Q45, they're $150, with an additional 20% discount at launch. And for that price, they should basically lose this battle. This entire video should be an absolute decimation, because the Sony WH-1000XM5 costs more than twice as much. For that price, you can buy two of the Soundcores and still have money left over. The latest prices will be in the description, but let's start with Sony's traditional strong suit, noise cancelling. You'll hear for yourselves how these sound, but to start with, the noise cancelling is adjustable on the sound core and not adjustable on the Sony. We've had a lot of complaints about that on our channel, so that's a point for sound core. Sound core also has adaptive ANC, but we like our ANC under our control, so we ain't adapting to it. The Sony has a huge bunch of features for noise cancelling, including adaptive noise cancelling, hand on ear cup, speak to chat, and a couple more. So purely for features, the Sony wins out. Sony and Soundcore also let you change the transparency mode, a bigger scale for Sony, but we don't think it makes a huge difference. Okay, okay, we know what you're saying. Just tell us how they perform. Here are the ANC and transparency samples. Our conclusions will follow. So guys, Sony won the ANC in terms of attenuating sound, but you know what? Sony has beaten much more expensive competitors as well. Even so, the difference between these two isn't huge. Soundcore has done a great job, and when we wore it and actually listened to it with our ears, we could say only one thing. Soundcore's noise cancellation is in the excellent category. There's a slight exception though. Sony has decided to switch ANC modes automatically this time using AI. There's no slider in the app as we said, and if you notice when you use them for a long time, that ANC keeps shifting between some mode ever so slightly. This is quite annoying considering Sony gives you so many options in the app, but takes away this one and gives it to AI. And I personally know at least one person who wants to sell their XM5 because of this. We hope Sony fixes this, or at least gives users the option to do that switching automatically. Soundcore has a wind noise reduction in the app, but that didn't have too much effect on the wind. Both are usable outside in a light breeze or moderate wind. Sony does just fine without any additional mode. So for wind, we kind of thought they were similar. The tables turn when we go to transparency. Sony lets you focus on voice, which is a handy feature, but Sony's levels are lower, which makes them a less ideal option for transparency. Soundcore always cuts out the low end in transparency, which is great, and voices are louder than Sony, which is amazing. The win on transparency actually goes to the Soundcore. We did not think it would, but there you are. There is, however, one small exception. And that's best explained with a graph. The sound core boosts the mids where the voices live. That's why the voices are clearer. But it also boosts the highs where harsher noises like fan sounds or drills live. 
So if you want to listen in an environment that has any of those sounds, a cafe for example with a coffee machine going, the Sony might actually work better for you even though the overall volume is lower. But in most cases, we're talking to people without drills, so the Soundcore transparency wins out. Soundcore also has a talk mode which limits music volume, so you can always listen to your surroundings. Ideal if you want to have some background music on your headphones in an office, for example. Speaking of office and headphones, let's go on to phone calls. And here, we were surprised. But of course, take a listen for yourself and we'll be back in a bit with the conclusion. Use the chapters below to skip to our conclusion. All right, let's start off with a quiet condition. This is the Sony WH-1000XM5. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. And then quieter. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. And this is the sound core space Q45. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. And now the Sony WH-1000XM5 in slightly noisy conditions with traffic all around me. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. All right, guys, the sound core Q45. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. And a gentle breeze again for the WH1000 XM5. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. And now we'll hear how it sounds without these headphones, just the wind sound. This is the sound from a microphone on the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4. It's quite windy, isn't it? And there's a gentle breeze again for the sound core Q45. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. So, not just in the tests you heard, but the numerous actual real life calls we made, it felt that Sony was the winner. The sound core has a two mic system and the Sony a four mic, so that might explain the volume difference. But beyond that, the kind of sound that sound core lets in made our voices sound quite tinny in comparison. The sound core are average for calls and are definitely usable though, but still, we'll give this round to the Sony. When it comes to Fuckman controls, however, just look at this list of controls. Everything a Fuckman's heart desires, from volume control to changing ANC mode to muting, an excellent feature set from Soundcore there. And since we're talking about the touch, let's talk about the overall build. So the Sony WH-1000XM5 just feels a bit more premium. We don't know what it is. Maybe it's the lightweight, the more rounded headband, the shape, or the nice subtle design touch with the yokes. The Sony feels like an expensive device that's not trying to be loud design-wise, not volume-wise. We'll, we'll talk about sound in a bit. The Soundcore also has a decent build with the embossed glossy Soundcore Note logo on the cups. And it doesn't look too shabby, but it does look bigger and bulkier with those round cups. There are almost two cups, the first part with the buttons and the ports, and then the plastic cups holding the ear pads. Overall, we prefer the Sony. But the sound core has a foldable design and it dusts out aluminum alloy hinges. This should make them more resilient to damage in the long term, so that's a good thing. And with great folding comes some space saving. The hard shell case on the sound core is smaller than the Sony's. In fact, it seems to be modeled after the older Sony XM4 and XM3 cases because the size is identical. What they didn't take from those cases though is a place to store your cables. There's no pouch or pocket to do so, which makes taking those cables along a bit messy. There's no airplane adapter with either of these headphones. <laughs> Look, we love the touch controls and buttons on the Sony. They work well. They have the most responsive touch surface we've ever used on headphones. But we've always been fan of buttons. Buttonophile, if you must. And Soundcore and Nails absolutely nails their buttons. We got used to it very quickly and almost never missed a button or hit the wrong one by mistake, even though it was a totally new button layout. That either says something about our incredible learning ability or the sheer intuitiveness of the button layout. 
We'll let you be the judge of that. Adjusting the sound core headband is a bit different, but you do have discrete ratchets that are clicky and you know what? It works. The Sony has a smoother adjustment mechanism and bigger case, which somehow seems less solid. There's very limited customization on either, but between all the buttons on the sound core and the multiple touch surfaces on the Sony, you don't really need it. Another interesting aspect is that the sound core seems to work with very big heads too. So if you're the proud owner of one of those chonkin noggins and the Sony for some reason isn't big enough, the sound core might just about get you in. But what do those chunky Soundcore cups get you? Well, along with the Sennheiser Momentum 4, they get you the best battery life in the industry. A ridiculous 50 hours with ANC on. I mean, wow. We've had some other products with bigger numbers but either aren't very loud or they don't have ANC, but that's not the case here. Again, we'll talk about sound in a bit, but the Soundcore clearly surpasses the Sony, at least on paper for battery life. And if that's not enough, you get four hours of battery life from four minutes of charge. But Sony gives you three hours of battery life from three minutes of charging, so that's not a huge difference there. And if Soundcore won that round, well, Sony's gonna take this round. We use these for several hours and days in the scorching summers of the Netherlands. Yes, that's a thing now. The Soundcore heated up quite a bit in a 27.6 degrees Celsius room. The earpads shot up to 31.5 after a couple of hours of use. While that might be one thing and can be subjective, the clamping force is definitely not. Don't get us wrong. If you take breaks, you're going to be fine. But after a few hours of wearing these, I was definitely feeling pressure behind my ears, no matter what setting the headband adjustment was on. When I put the XM5 on after that, it was like an angel massaging my pinna with the feather from the pads around and don't give you that sense of your ears being suspended in the air. So after a while, even though the pads are soft, you can kind of feel them on your outer ears. So the sheer lightweight and the low clamping force make the Sony a winner in our book. Again, the sound core is fine. It's just that Sony is such a clear winner, especially for longer listening sessions. So where did Soundcore cut some corners? Obviously at such a relative price, you can't expect multipoint. Psych, well it turns out you can. Yes, Soundcore has the ability to connect to two devices at once. What's more is that, like Sony, you have a full-fledged device list in the app that you can use to switch between devices. Absolutely phenomenal at this price. It worked well between phones, and while watching YouTube in a browser on my Mac, when a call came to my Android phone, for example, the headphones switched flawlessly. So good job there, Soundcore. In both cases, you will have to pause music on one device to play on another for this feature to work reliably. Sony does have two small advantages here. One, the XM5 can pull connection from a previously paired device, so no need to put the headphones into pairing mode. And B, you can fix and unfix a device temporarily in the app if it acts weird, which it sort of does now and again. In terms of connectivity, you don't get Google Assistant like you do with the XM5. So you can call up your phone's assistant, but you won't get access to listening to messages, responding with your voice, and certain voice commands, like toggling ANC, which are handy features. The bigger miss, arguably, for Soundcore is that these headphones don't come with Android Fast Pair, which means you will have to use the regular pairing method and your headphones won't automatically connect to your other Android devices. And in terms of another small or big advantage, depending on how you feel about it, the Soundcore doesn't come with a wear sensor. You know, the one that detects you're wearing your headphones and can do things like resume music once you put the headphones on your head or switch your call to the phone once you take them off. Okay, we've kept you waiting long enough. Let's talk about sound. Because after noise cancelling, that's the place where you usually make the biggest compromises with cheaper products. But not in this case. I mean, this is bullshit. Out of the box, it isn't even close. The Sony's tuning is so dark, it's just about possible for high-end headphones. The sound core sounds sublime. It's just a much cleaner and pristine sound. Of course, Sony has that fantastic 5-band EQ and a clear bass slider. Once you use that and LDAC together, the XM5 sound very good. But here's the thing, 
Soundcore has LDAC 2 and man does it slam. We tested this on AAC as well with a Mac and an iPhone and you know what? There might be some slight resolution loss, but overall not bad at all. We have included sound samples at the end of the video. But coming back to LDAC, you will have to choose between LDAC and dual device though, just like on the XM5. But here's where it gets tricky. We think that the XM5 30mm driver units are a bit better at base, whereas the Soundcore Q45's 40mm drivers are good at everything else. Especially the performance at the higher end is second to none. The treble quality is it's the same, I would say, as the Liberty 3 Pro, but the tuning is way better than the Liberty 3 Pro, not overdone, which, by the way, are some of the best uh, earbuds at that price. I thought that the mids dulled out guitar distortion sounds, but then I selected the rock preset from the whole list of presets the Soundcore gives you in the Soundcore app, and I got all the delicious ear bleeding distortion my aging metal heart could want. There are so many presets, and they are excellent starting points to get to the sound you're looking for on the sound core. You can just take a preset you like and tweak it to a custom EQ using the more flexible 8-band EQ in the app. It responds to Sony's clear bass slider. The sound core has a bass up toggle that you can apply over every preset. It does a good job of adding a little oomph to the sound. The overall maximum volume is well into make yourself deaf territory, but still a bit lower than Sony's who needs ears anyway level. The one thing we will say is that the sound course sounds different on normal and ANC modes. The frequency response chart we generated shows the difference. The normal mode brings down the bass quite a bit and is very good for vocals and sounds a bit more neutral, maybe something audiophiles would prefer. The ANC scoops the mids out to an extent the vocals recede a bit into the background. But again, not a very big deal because of the EQ as we said. In a way that kind of makes sense when you're out and about, whether it be walking around or just doing laundry at home, bass tends to take a hit. So activating more bass in ANC mode isn't a terrible idea. Unless it's a mistake, in which case it's still not a terrible idea. Both of these also have an audio cable and the sound core sounds good with a 3.5mm jack cable, just like over LDAC. If we had to nitpick, the sound core cable is tiny and might just be a bit too short at 110cm if you have a desktop setup. Sony, of course, also has a cable and has a nice long 120cm with an angle jack. That extra 20cm and that angle sometimes makes all the difference. That's what she said. So guys, at this price, it feels unreal to say it, but it's pretty much a tie. We cannot praise the Soundcore Space Q45 highly enough. I mean, just the fact that we are comparing it to one of the top ANC headphones in the world is insane. If you pasted a popular brand name on this, like say Bose, these could easily cost twice the price and no one, no one would bat an eyelid. But here's the thing, you pay for brand names for a reason, right? I mean, sure, there's the perception of the brand, but there's other things too. After sales service, warranties, repairability. Sony, for example, has been using recycled parts a lot on its recent products, and we really appreciate that. If you're having a very hot summer, like I mentioned earlier, or some extreme weather event, consider the role of the products you're buying and the role of the companies that are making them. Sony publishes a detailed sustainability report for the whole company, for example, in addition to the recycled material use we mentioned. Soundcore didn't provide as much details, maybe they ran out of time, except that they have a refurbished program as well to reuse a lot of the products, which customers return for superficial reasons. But we think this is one area where they could do more. If we hear more, we'll update our blog with that information, so make sure you bookmark www.dhrme.nl. So, which ones should you buy, guys? I don't know about you, but we found a new set of headphones that are real easy to recommend. Here's the thing, for people who are not enthusiasts, we always used to recommend the XM4 because they're from Sony, they do everything the XM5 does, but a little bit worse. And they were always, you know, on sale or cheaper. But after this release, Soundcore Space Q45, yeah, come on, it's just, 
it's just incredible value. Soundcore's legacy of creating insanely good value has been taken to the next level. Serious shots have been fired and the likes of Sennheiser, Sony, Bose and other big name ANC headphone manufacturers are gonna have to watch this space. We have a feeling that these headphones are going to take the market by storm. Except for the comfort, the calls and the fact that you're buying from a smaller company, we think that these might be the internet's new favorite headphones. And if you want to grab one, get one from the links in the description below. Helps out the channel at no extra cost to you. You've been asking us to mind our language and we've been DHRME. Namaste. Sound samples coming right up.